Hey, this is Michael from Clutter Stuff, and uh, today I'm unboxing a new uh, subscription that I'm trying out called Iconic of the Month Club, and I've got a link to it uh, down in the uh, description field as usual. So it's it's shipped. It's not a fancy box or anything. It's just a priority mailbox, but that's all right because uh, the price is worth it. They save money. I, you know, I. I like the fancy boxes, but you know they're—I mean they're—they're they're great and everything. But uh, yeah, this is—I think it's, uh, it's somewhere around thirty-five dollars for forty comics every three months. So uh, yeah, for thirty-five dollars for forty comics, I would gladly not worry about what they sent. You know what they send it in. Okay, now here's a, a spoiler, a list of the comics that um, they've sent. So, I'm not going to look at that. Um, you can pick your preferences. Uh, my pre I, for my preferences, I selected that I was... Uh, basically, what they do is they, they give you different uh, categories and uh, ask, you know, how much you like them on a scale of, say, 1 to 10. So... What I what I chose was Marvel superheroes comics were my my favorite. So we're gonna pull out these and look at them. Got a Captain Adam number fourteen. See if I can try to miss the glare. There you go, Captain Adam number fourteen, bag and boarded. Captain Adam number nineteen, and uh, both of these. Let's see, this is 88. Yeah, these are both from 1988. Um, I never read Captain Adam, so I don't really have anything to say about it. Uh, these are DC Comics. Um, and, you know, as I said, I, I don't really have anything to say about it because I never read Captain Adam. Um, now, I did read this next one. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. Uh, Dazzler. Um, Dazzler's a funny, there's a funny story about Dazzler. Uh, Dazzler's first appearance was in 1979, I believe, in a Marvel graphic novel. And over the years, they've tried to bring her back a few times. Uh, she's currently a member of A-Force, if I, if, um, in the all-new, all-different Marvel. But, what's funny about her is that, uh, she was created to take advantage of the um, disco craze. And it was she was it was originally going to be a movie um, with uh, a number of disco stars in it. And uh, of course I'm gonna tell I'm telling I'm trying to tell you this and I can't remember who. I know that um, Donna Summers was supposed to be part of it. Um, and I'm, I'm just not remembering the rest of them. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, the, um, oh, dang, that is really, uh, that's really annoying now. I cannot, for the life of me, remember who else was supposed to be in the movie. But anyway, the movie never actually happened. Um, the, uh, comic book happened, the graphic novel happened, but the movie never did. Uh, it was supposed to be a, a album, a soundtrack album, a movie, and a comic book, and the movie just, you know, fell apart. Probably because Disco was on its way out in 1979. But anyway, so I've got Dazzler number 24. This is from 1982. Uh, number 26. You can definitely see on that one the Disco influence. And then number 34 from uh, 1984. So, I I, I kind of like Dazzler. Um, this one is interesting. This one is uh, boarded, but it's like just a piece of cardboard. I don't know. Um, and the it, there's some spine damage here. <coughs> but we're going to talk about the, the price for in a second. So, I'm... Uh, I'm not going to complain about the condition. If, you know, this one, 
Um, it just, you know, it's a, it's a little crease on the cover here. Um, but, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, you guys know, if you know anything about me, I'm not a huge stickler for condition. I, I'm not going to send this away to be graded or anything like that. I, I just want to read a good story. So, the next group, I'll just go ahead and pull these out, is Excalibur. And we've got, uh, now Excalibur, I remember when this started, this was kind of, um, really, it, it, it kind of started really when X-Men started getting, like, really hot. This is from 1989, and it's issue number 9. I actually remember, I collected back in uh, the day, I had, like, the first four or five issues of Excalibur um, when it came out. But it's led by uh, Captain Britain. Um, Nightcrawler is a member. Um, Kitty Pride. Um, I can't remember this other uh, girl's name. Um, but I'm sure I'll, I'll figure it out when I when I uh, when I read these. So number, we've got number nine. We've got number ten. Number 11. Okay, that's Phoenix. Okay, so that is Phoenix. That's that's who that is. Uh, what I was trying to think of. And then the other one I want to say is... Um, Siren, maybe? I don't know. It's been 30 years since I've read... Uh, 20, or at least 25 years since I've read an Excalibur comic. So, uh, number 11. Number 12. Um, and number 13. And um, these are actually all in fairly decent condition. You know, I don't see any, there's no, no major flaws. But all bagged and boarded. Um, Alright, we've got another run here. Of Kazar the Savage. So this one is number 22 from January 1982. Um, actually, that might be January 1983. Uh, sometimes the cover for, uh, yeah, January 1983. So we've got Shanna, um, Shanna the Savage. We've got Kazar the Savage, number 23, 24, 25, Spider-Man, it looks like, 26, and 27. Now, Kazar is kind of Marvel's answer to Tarzan. Um, he lives in a place called the Savage Land, uh, which is, uh, I want to say it's in Antarctica, but uh, prehistoric animals uh, survived there. So you can see, like, uh, on the one cover, well, there you can see his pet saber tooth tiger. Let's see if I can get that without the glare. There you go. Um, and there's dinosaurs in the Savage Land and, and and other beasts, other prehistoric beasts. Oh, this is exciting. Okay. All right. So, uh, if you if you saw my last haul, the comic shop, uh, the com excuse me, the comic show haul from uh, last weekend, uh, you'll notice that I've got a trade paperback, and here we have issues of Power Pack. I love Power Pack. Um, they were a bunch of kids. Uh, they uh, Franklin Richards became associated with them eventually, which kind of cemented the connection between Power Pack and the Fantastic Four, which they were kind of like kid versions of the Fantastic Four almost. A little bit different, you know, different powers and such, but but a little bit of a little bit the same. So anyway, we've got Power Pack number nine from. Uh, April 1984, number 10, number 11, that's a nice cover, and number 12, and this guest stars Kitty Pride and Nightcrawler of the X-Men, so that is power pack number 12.
All right. So far, so good. Oh, oh boy. Here we go. I'm going to pull out all of it. There we go. All right. We've got The Thing from Fantastic Four, but this is his solo title. And uh, this is The Thing, number 26, from August 1985. So number 26. Number 29. That's a nice picture. A nice cover. I like that. Yeah, let me see if I can get it a little bit. Um, I, I always, I'm always, I always like when the action interferes with the title. It's just, I don't know, it's just a little quirk. I just like when it, when they do that. It's, it's funny to me. Um, so it's number 29, number 30, which I think I actually already have this. This is a Secret Wars 2 crossover. Um, so I'm pretty sure I already have this issue, but, uh, yeah, hey, that's fine. Uh, 32. The wrestling career of Vance Astro. It's not long for this world. Um, these are all pro wrestlers. You know, I'm trying to remember because I have not actually read the thing in, in years, decades. I want to say that during this series, the thing was a pro wrestler. And, you know, so things like this is, the New Grapplers, uh, Van, Wrestling for Vance Astro, um, well, this is Beyonder, um, this is Gator, um, Big Top Brawl, that's interesting, um, but anyway, so I, I, he might have been a pro wrestler during this time, Ben Grimm, The Thing, so... That's issue 33, and then issue 36, and that's that's cool because we've got. I, is this the last issue? This might be the last issue. There's a little bit little stain on it here, but uh, it says featuring She-Hulk versus the new Miss Marvel, and this is the Miss Marvel who I believe I, I don't remember her real name, but I believe this is the Miss Marvel who uh, joined the Fantastic Four. Um, for a while, and actually, uh, during the late 80s, uh, early 90s, she actually turned into, she got mutated the same way as the thing, and turned into, you know, a lumpy pile of rocks, the way the thing is, um, and the thing, of course, continued to mutate, and he was all sharp and pointy. Um, they ended up being an item, the thing and Miss Marvel. Okay. Oh boy, this is, I'm, I'll tell you, I am so far definitely not disappointed. Let me go ahead and pull out this next uh, run here. So we've got Thunderbolts. And uh, they, I think, I believe they just either just started a new Thunderbolt series or announced it. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, Thunderbolts 68 from. I don't know exactly, but based on the um, cover prices, it's either late 90s or early 2000s. Uh, the $2.25 uh, cover price, U.S. dollars. So Thunderbolts number 68, number 69, number 70, 71. That's a, that's a typical 90s cover for you. I will never understand why women in the 90s apparently in comic books all dress like this. I mean, that's not even a top at all. I don't I don't know. I'm not sure what that's all about, but whatever. So that's uh, 71. Uh, 72, that's a nice cover too. I like that one. Let's see if we get it without the glare. That's a nice cover. Uh, 73. These are all good covers, I tell you. Um, and 74. Again, another good one. So I've never, I never read Thunderbolts. Um, so, you know, that'll be interesting to take a look at. We have the Uncanny X-Men. 
number 319. This must be from the late 90s. I've always liked Archangel. You know, um, once after Apocalypse kind of got a hold of him and turned, well, he, he's the angel. And when, when Apocalypse got him and turned him into uh, one of the four horsemen, and then uh, he became Archangel after that. Um, it's just kind of cool. It's kind of kind of cool not having a, you know the squeaky clean angel, you know. Uh, so I don't. Uh, again, you know, I, I I don't read a whole lot of X Men, so it'll be nice to uh, take a look at that. Oh, well, here we go. Now this is definitely a product of the the eighties. This is January nineteen eighty four. X Men and the Micronauts number one. The Micronauts were actually based on a toy line called the Micronauts. I think it was a toy line. But they were these little, you know, infinitely small um, people. They, they lived in what was called the Microverse, which was uh, an entire universe that was so small as to be undetectable. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is cool. Um, I can already, I see, you know, Wolverine's got his... Uh, his brown and tan costume here. Storm's got her uh, mohawk up there. Uh, pretty cool. This is the uh, classic mid-80s lineup. All right. I'll pull out the rest of them just to... Uh, okay. Okay, this is Image Comics, which I, I never really got into any Image Comics, but uh, Young Blood. And we've got, let me get away from that glare, number zero. Not sure why they started with zero, but there's number zero. There's number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. And that's it. So that's the comics I got. Like I said, it's 35 bucks. And you can see the stash. That is a that is a decent haul right there. Um, quite a few good ones. Uh, some that I'm not familiar with, uh, but I'll read those anyway. And let me just count how many that we've got here. We've got two Captain Adams, three Dazzlers, five Excaliburs. So that's ten right there. Uh, six Kazars. Four power packs, so that's 20. Six things, so 26. Uh, seven Thunderbolts, so that's 33. Two X-Men, that's 35. And five Youngblood, so that's 40 comics. Cost per comic. You can see here. Here, let me see if I can get it to show. Cost per comic. 11.7 cents. So that's... Obviously not including shipping and handling, but 40 times, uh, we'll say 12 cents is about, what is that? What do you four dollars and 80 cents? Um, and then the shipping was 1345. Well, that doesn't quite add up, so I'm not sure what the cost per comic is supposed to refer to. But, whatever. I mean, I paid, like I said, it was, it was roughly $35. I, I can't remember the exact total, but it was roughly $35 shipped. You know, nothing nothing extra on top of that. Um, I got 40 comics, so we're still looking at less than a dollar a comic. Uh, you know, just for the power packs and... Uh, Let's see, the, the Micronauts, Excalibur, Dazzler, uh, the Thing. You know, these these are all easily worth a dollar a piece. And, and I'll read them all. I mean, maybe I, uh, one of the great things about these mystery boxes like this is that, you know, I got I got some titles I've never looked at before. Captain Adam. Um, I never really read Kazar. Uh, Thunderbolts I never read. Youngblood I never read. So, I mean, I, you know, I'll take a look. I've got, I've got these pretty decent runs. I've got... Um, you know, seven issues in order of Thunderbolts. I've got the first five issues of Youngblood. 
So, you know, I can take a look at these, uh, give them a read, and discuss, and find out if I enjoy them. Uh, you never know. Maybe I end up being a huge fan and start buying the series uh, from here on out. So, I'm, I'm real happy with the, uh, with this new club. Um, and, and they only, uh, do it every, once every three months, I believe. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I think I might go ahead and stick around with it. Let's, uh, see what comes next month. Alright, uh, it's, thanks, uh, for watching. If you like the video, please like, uh, comment and, uh, subscribe. Um, and, We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.